William Wilberforce is remembered as the man who led the successful campaign to outlaw slavery in the territories of the British Empire. This noble cause consumed his time and energy for almost 50 years. In fact, he died just four days after the British Parliament passed the law to end this barbaric trade. But there was a stage in Wilberforce's political career when he was consumed with another ambition. It was rumored that he was a strong candidate for a major position in the British cabinet. And he found himself eager to gain such an office. For days, he could think of nothing else. But ultimately, it was the concept of Sabbath that cured his ambition. He wrote the following in his journal. Blessed be to God for the day of rest and religious occupation, wherein earthly things assume their true size. Memorials usually take the form of parks, monuments, and buildings. But God chose a day in time as a memorial of his creation. He asked us to rest on that day, to honor him, and to remind us of our origin, purpose, and destiny. The Seventh-day Sabbath is not only a memorial of God's work of creation, but it is also a sign of his covenant with us. And it is a meaningful sign on many levels. The Sabbath is a sign of the plan of salvation. It reminds us of God's work of deliverance and sanctification in our lives, and that we depend completely on him. The Sabbath is a gift for all peoples, Jesus stated that the Sabbath was made for all mankind, not just the Jewish nation. God wants all nations to be blessed by his covenant, and the Sabbath is a fitting sign of that desire. Welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Brandon. This is my wife, Sophia. Hello. And I'd like to welcome everybody here to Sabbath School Youth Day. Welcome. So we have our collegiate class. This is basically our regulars here that attend class on the regular. I'm going to start from my right and then go all the way to my left. Uh, Shelby is all the way to the far right. Adrielle, of course, my wife here, Sophia. We have Adrian, and we have Hello. Jusan. How you doing? Thank you guys for joining us um, for this discussion on Sabbath School today. We really appreciate you giving us your time. Um, before we actually get started, we have some housekeeping that we need to take care of. Um, so I just want you all to remember that if you have questions, you can text the word Sabbath School to 855-997-1170. Just go ahead and click on the link that will pop up on there and put your question in there and send it. You can also follow us on Facebook and on YouTube and you can post your questions there. They'll be answered at a later date. The other thing I want to encourage you to do is to take the Sabbath School quiz later on at the end of this study. All you have to do is text the word SS quiz to 855-997-1170 and the answer the quiz question that's there. The first person that answers the question correctly will get a $10 Amazon gift card. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm gonna be answering. I'll be taking the <laughs> We wish you all blessings on answering those questions. Great. So now that we got the housekeeping items out of the way, mm -hmm. let's go ahead and start prayer, yeah? We I think our, that's a good idea. Yeah, let's, start our, start let's bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, I want to thank you for this day, and I want to pray that the things that we have studied today, that we will apply to our daily lives, and we will live it and not just read it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Okay, so uh, we're going to start off with Bible, Bible reading, um, basically the text of focus for this week's lesson study. But before that, we just want to tell you that today's topic or today's lesson mm -hmm. is about dying to the law married to Christ. 
My husband renamed it. Uh-huh. Dying to live, living to die. All Amen. right. Amen. 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 Stop the Amen. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. All right. All right. So let's start this soup. Let's go to Romans 7, 19, 20, and 24. For those that are listening, we are reading from Romans 7, verses 19, 20, and 24. And it reads, For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. But I see, I'm sorry, 24, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Mm -hmm. Amen. So uh, these are the common struggles that um, Paul was talking about here in these verses, right? This is the common struggle of a Christian wanting to do good, but does evil instead. Um, It's tantamount to our Christian walk, but it's not only like a part, but... It's in some cases it identifies us as Christians. Uh, Adriel, can you tell me why why struggling is a sign of Christian life? Okay, so I like to think of our spiritual lives or our Christian lives as a roller coaster. You have your very highs, and you also have your lows. And you have in Galatians five, it explains where what some of those lows can be. So you have sexual immorality, impurity, worshiping false gods, doing witchcraft, hating, making trouble, being jealous, being angry, being selfish, and so forth. So I think on those lows where you're struggling and you may think, oh no, um, where is God? Or you may be mad with God. I think it's in those times that he really wants us to be able to strengthen our relationship with him. And if you're not struggling, you know, every, everybody's not perfect. So if you're not struggling, you're really not being able to strengthen your relationship with God. So I think that's how it shows that we're just being closer to God. Wow. I love it. Wow. I feel like what she's saying is that the struggle is what shows that you're striving. Uh-huh. That's what I was really getting out of that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And it's in the struggle that you build that relationship with God, right? Yeah. So for all of us, can we name out some examples of some common struggles in our Christian walk? I can give an example. Um, this doesn't only go to Christians, but it also goes to everyone. And that would be procrastination. Mm. You know, you know that you're supposed to do something. You have tasks that you have to do for the day. Or, you know, you know you're supposed to read the scripture and pray, but you can't, like, bring yourself to doing it. So that's an example of what you want to do, but you can't bring yourself to doing it. Hey, I love that. That's a great example. Okay. One example of um, sin that people can be struggling with is lusting. Maybe for a guy, for example, when he, if they deal with lusting after women, maybe they're seeing women as objects and not as the beautiful women that God made. So maybe you should that, that could be a struggle. Yeah, those are definitely some ways the flesh can take over in those situations. Definitely. Um, uh, near the beginning of chapter 7, by the way, thank you, Adriel, for, for that weigh-in. Um, Paul gets into this rich dialogue about being dead to the law, right? Mm-hmm. Being alive in Christ. Uh, Shelby, can you tell me what that means to be dead to the law? And what law are we to be dead to? So the law that we're supposed to be dead to is um, we're supposed to die to the law as a way of salvation. So what that basically means is that we can't save ourselves from obedience to the law due to our sinful nature. We can't save ourselves just by keeping the law because, as Paul points out, when he was a Pharisee, that outwardly it looked like he was keeping the law, but inwardly he was not keeping the law. So instead of depending on ourselves to save ourselves, we have to have faith in Jesus that he will save us through the sanctification process. Mm. Amen. Very good. I think you struck a chord there with um, talking about the sanctification process. Uh, At the end of the day, Paul is talking about Um, having the Jews at that time to stop making the law their God, right? Mm -hmm. And cut dying to that mentality so that you can be alive in Christ. Quick question. Has anyone here tried to get somewhere that they've never been before without a GPS? Luckily, Uh, I mean, luckily for me, I know the streets of Miami. Oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, I don't need one. Uh, No, but honestly, yeah, definitely. 
multiple times uh traveling out of state you know mm -hmm. find that a lot you know oh i need the gps i need the gps but um yeah, you wind up asking for directions is what winds up happening. Exactly. At least if, if you're smart, you ask for directions. You ever yeah. just not ask for direction because you're just sure you know where Why you're you going? Folk, though, when you you know, I, I look <laughs> both ways. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, at the end of the day, what happens is if you try to go someplace without um, a GPS or at least a guide mm -hmm. to get you where you need to go, one of two things are going to happen. You're either going to get lost Number one, or number two, you might wind up in a place you think is the right place to be. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's not. So keeping the law without price is essentially the same thing. You'll wind up getting lost or keeping the law in a way that you think it should be kept when you're way off base, like mm -hmm. the Pharisees were at that time. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, let's transition a little bit and talk about this, this law of sin that Paul talks about. Uh, Jusan, what is this law of sin, and why is it warring with our minds? Um, to answer that question, I looked in Romans 7, verses 23, and it's, it reads, But I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind, and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. So the law of sin is basically the law of our body. It is our sinful nature that causes us to sin. This sinful nature, it is... Um, warring with our minds because in our minds is the spirit and the flesh that are fighting against each other that causes us to either do what is right in God's eyes or what is wrong in his eyes. Mm. Okay. Have mercy. That sounds like a really not a good problem to have. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine if your right hand and your left hand decided that they were going to operate independently? Mercy. Like your right hand was going to do what it wants to do and your left hand was going to do what it wants to do. Mm. You wouldn't be able to get much done. Imagine trying to drive like that. I want to go left. Nope, I would like to go right. Some of us already drive like that. I'll have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> you got one end of the steering wheel, the other end, or on the phone, or doing something. Mm. But like easy. two different laws in our members that are warring. So in your mind, you want to do what's right. But then you have this other part, your flesh, your body, that wants you to do what's wrong. And they're mm -hmm. constantly at battle. You know what, to touch on that a little bit more, um, Jusan, I'm going to throw a verse at you for you to look up. Um, if you can turn to Romans 8, Romans chapter 8, verses 2 through 8, and read it. And Adrian, if you could uh, go to Ephesians 5 and read verses 19 to 23. And uh, that should give us a, a more or less a, a better picture of this struggle that we're talking about. Okay, Romans 8, verse 2 to 8 says, um, Because through Christ Jesus the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. Wow. 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 Yeah, so um, Ephesians 5, uh, 19 to 23. You got it. Uh, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of the Lord. Wives, submit yourself unto your own husbands as unto the Lord, for the husband is the head. Oh, hold on, Adrian, I think we got the wrong verse here. 
So my apologies. I think I put the wrong verse in there. I set you up, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading, I'm like, yeah, okay. exactly. This, this I mean, submitting to the law, I don't know. I'm <laughs> sorry, he's married. I guess he's always thinking about marriage and, and, and all of those things. <laughs> it's a submission. So that's, that's <laughs> there we go, submission. The verse he was really supposed to be reading uh, outlines what the uh, lust of the flesh brings you, some of the characteristics. So it's adultery, it's fornication, it's lying, it's cheating. And then on the uh, gift of the spirit side, when you give yourself to the spirit and live your life after the spirit, some of the fruits that come of that. So some of those fruits are long suffering, kindness, humility. So uh, well, I think you meant um, Galatians 5. Galatians. There we go. Let's yeah. read that one. Go Galatians ahead. Galatians 5. <laughs> go for it. Uh, Galatians 5, 19 to 23. Yeah. Uh, now the works. Okay. Yeah. yeah so. <laughs> now the works of the flesh are manifest which are these adultery fornication uncleanliness uh idolatry witchcraft hatred mm -hmm. variance immolation a wrath strife um heresies envying murder drunkenness re revelings and such like of the which i tell you before as i have told you in the time past mm -hmm. that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of god mm -hmm. but the fruit of the spirit is Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Amen. 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 Save me. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you, man. <laughs> so we believe that what we sow, we will reap. Right? Um, uh, my wife teases me. You know, she says, you believe that no matter what kind of seed you sow, you hope to reap a, reap a mango. Uh -huh. And, I, you know, i got to be honest with you. I'm always hoping to reap a mango, no matter what it is that I sow. I mean, it's mango season. So. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, um, if I put in the ground an orange seed, I'm going to get an, an orange, orange seed. Mm -hmm. The same thing with sin. If you reap or if you sow sin, you will get sin and death on top of that. In, in response, um, I wonder if anybody had any weigh-ins on that. No, okay. So we're gonna move on to the next. Uh, so essentially, it's a it's a law of nature. What you reap is ultimately what you're going to sow. What you sow is what, what you're, you're going, going to reap. reap. Exactly. Now the verses give us a pretty good idea of the fruit that we produce. Um, but Adrian, uh, help us understand. What are some examples in your own daily life? or in life in general as a Christian, um, that gives us some insight as to what it means to live after the flesh versus living after the spirit. Hmm, put me on the spot here. Um, so some daily examples. I mean, honestly, to answer this question, I believe that uh, we need to understand something first. Oh. I feel like people, some people have a misconception of uh, of sin, that there's a hierarchy to sin, there's levels to sin. All of these are the on the same level. Sin is sin, uh -huh. there's no one greater than the other. Uh -huh. um, but, uh, and I think once, once you start thinking that way, I think that's where the devil has won. Uh -huh. And he has a hold on your, on your mindset uh -huh. in regards to, to sin. And we always fall into this, uh, oh, if I do this a little bit, it, it won't matter, you know, if I, if I do this, it, it won't matter. It's just a little bit. I'm just doing it this one time. Mm -hmm. um, and I think on a general level, everyone struggles with that. Mm -hmm. um, for, for me, I mean, you know, it, all, the, all these people watch. But um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I would say, um, I guess what comes to mind is envy, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, we, we all fall into wanting something that isn't ours and that um, that we're not grateful for what God has already placed in our lives. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I believe that's one that seeps that seeps in covetousness as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so but on a more um, I guess broad spectrum, uh, I feel like a lot of people also um, they they have problems with uh, sexual immorality, mm -hmm. um, even something, see, I was just about to say, even something as simple as lying, but lying is, th is the same level as every sin. Mm -hmm. um, people have problems with lying, people have problems with um, 
lustful thoughts, uh -huh. uh, lustful nature, um, fornication. Uh -huh. Oh man, uh, <laughs> I'm, that's I'm, that's probably a topic nobody likes to talk about. Um, I'm pretty sure fornication, especially amongst our age group, uh -huh. I'm pretty sure lustful thoughts, fornication is pornography. Yeah, yeah. The, these are all touchy subjects for people, but. Um, I guess that's why we're here this morning because we want to bring that up to light so um, that it, it's okay to, to have these things but you have to remember at the end of the day that in order to be saved you have to bring all these things to God Amen. and to follow Amen. the law Amen. so that it can help you make it into the kingdom Amen. and always repent, pray for, for strength and wisdom to get, to get through these uh, yeah. sinful ways and adrian i think you're making up a good making a good point because earlier we talked about um in one of our questions of um i think it was shelby's question about how outwardly you're keeping the law but inwardly it's yeah. like something else is going on right. like outwardly you look like you're keeping it and you're perfect but jesus showed us that you know it's on the inside it's in your heart that's why with the, the law is still important, right? It mm -hmm. still points out what sin is. That's why the law is still important. But Jesus showed us that we were far from keeping the law the way that he intended us to. Mm -hmm. So which is why, um, that's why we have to depend on him every day and kill our flesh every day. And you know, every morning when you wake up, you need to devote your day to God and read his word so that when it comes to these decisions that you make, you can choose the right decision, the one that God wants you to make. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. That also reminds me of a, a verse in Romans 8.13. Mm -hmm. It says, uh, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. Mm. But if the spirit is in you, sorry, I'm sorry. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, with if, if, you, if, if you have the spirit within you and you forget flesh you die to flesh mm -hmm. um you would you would definitely live through the spirit for you to gain eternal life okay so i got a question how do you kill the flesh every day mm. 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 um yeah. by the little decisions you make for example if you um for example if you wake up you, instead of going to your phone you go read the bible that's feeding that's feeding the spirit and starving the flesh that's one example oh Oh, yeah, feeding yeah. the spirit, starving yeah, the flesh. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, Anybody yeah. else? Any other examples of how we can feed the spirit as opposed to the flesh? Well, I believe first off we can start with prayer, right? Because mm -hmm. um, you can't uh, move on with your spiritual life unless you're, you can't starve the flesh unless you're speaking to God and uh, filling the spirit. Mm -hmm. um, and it's something we hear as a child growing up. Read your Bible, pray every day. So right, it's right. like stuff like that, you know. Um, you read your Bible, uh, pray, make sure you have that connection with God. Uh -huh. Therefore, you you won't, you will never thirst or hunger again. You know, uh -huh. you stay starve the flesh, and you feel the Spirit. That way, you'll always be filled, and you you try to stay on the right track. I know I my husband's wanna, about to oh, say sorry. something, but I think Shelby you has know, something. Yeah. yeah, I just <laughs> want to go off of what um, Jusan said. You know, you make these little decisions because we want to think that, oh, when persecution comes, oh, I'll be, I'll be on God's side. You know what I mean? But if you don't make these small decisions every day, it's not going to get easy to make the large decisions. Mm. Oh, wow. now wow. that's that right mm, there. Chip off yeah. a really big <laughs> 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 that, that, that we can cover. I had a question about that, though, and, and it kind of ties these two together, what uh -huh. Shelby said and what um, Adrian just said. Um, and that question is, what do you say to someone who they're reading their Bible and they're praying, but they're struggling to do those things? Like, I don't know if you've ever tried to pray, and in your prayer, your mind starts wandering off yeah. to something yeah. else. <laughs> or you read your Bible, and next thing you know, your face is in the Bible because you fell asleep. Facebook. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know, what do you, how do you encourage someone in your age group that's struggling to want to do those spiritual things? Mm -hmm. um, I think the first thing I would do is offer to do it with them. I think it's always motivating when you have somebody else with you. 
uh, starting a devotional plan doesn't even have to just be two people. You can have a group of people. Mm -hmm. I think that way, you know, you make a group chat. Everybody says what they liked about the devotional or they didn't like or if they had questions or anything like that. I know a lot of new devotionals have areas where you can put your prayers or prayer requests in the devotional so you can always go back to them and say, wow, look what God did for me here Amen. or Amen. after doing this devotion. So I think I would just offer to do it with them or, you know, call them and say, hey, it's time for a devotional or, hey, let's do a quick prayer before we start the day or something like that. Mm. I love that. Mm -hmm. Any other way in? Any other way in? Oh, man. She's like I, I can say something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I would say that it takes time and perseverance. You know, as it as you go on, it gets easier, um, and also limit what you spend other time with. Mm -hmm. You know, it's gonna be hard to you get you're gonna get distracted in the beginning if you know you spend like a lot of time on social media. Mm -hmm. So that's all you can think about. It's like, oh my goodness, I just saw something really funny. You know, but if you limit the time that you spend on other things, it will get easier to focus in God's word and with prayer also. Anthony, you guys are anywhere. Go ahead. Perseverance. That was, that was a, <laughs> yes, that's like the, the meat of everything. Because it's easy to fall into that mindset of, oh, I messed up. I'm not going to do it again. And then, but like the, the fact that you keep that ambitious tendency or perseverance to continue to do it, um, I, that definitely does help. Because it's, I found myself falling into, oh man, like, I prayed yesterday. Today I'm, I'm off. I'm off the. I'm, give me a little slack, you know. But <laughs> now nah, you gotta keep pushing through it because it's like Shelby said. Social media t also takes up your time. You don't even think that it's taking up your time, but it's like, like it makes you forget about what you have to do to feed your spiritual life. Uh -huh. Oh, um, I was gonna piggyback on what Adriel said. Um, having a, an accountability partner. That would help a lot because whenever you're feeling down, they could help you help lift you up. If, for example, if one day you don't know your Bible, you don't want to pray, or if you're going through something, they could like pray with you, uh -huh. read the Bible with you, and y'all could learn together and get closer to God with each other. And that's why it's good to have spiritual friends, friends that are that are serving God just like you, because they'll help you in this battle because it's not easy. Amen. 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 Uh, one thing I'll add too, and these are all great shares, by the way. Thank you for Amen. everything that you all are saying. Uh, accountability partner is what I'm hearing, persevering to consistency. One thing I'll add is uh, don't condemn yourself. Don't beat yourself up mm. if you should fall short. Uh, I think it's in Proverbs that says that a righteous man falls seven times but gets up on the eighth. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, aside from all these things, don't beat yourself up or another brother or sister up because they didn't stay consistent on the path. Actually, if you should hear about someone um, falling short or getting off their routine, like uh, Jusan and Adriel just said, be their support group, encourage them. Encourage them to get back up on their feet and get back on the walk because we all do fall sometimes, but it's our ability to rally with each other, rally uh, and get behind each other to help us back on the path that really uh, makes the difference. I want to go back to something else that we talked about earlier. Um, and in the reading, I know my husband, he read it um, from a, a different version, but I want to read it from the NASB. And I'm back in Romans chapter 7, if you would like to um, follow along. Mm -hmm. And it says, I'm so sorry, what was that? Mm -hmm. Which verse Romans did you seven. say? Romans chapter 7. And what was the verse we read earlier? Uh, 19, 20, 19, 20. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So Roman, it says, for the good that I want, I do not do. But I practice the very evil that I do not want. For if I'm doing the very thing I do not want, I am no longer the one doing it, but sin dwells in me. Mm. And then later on, Paul says, O oh, wretched man that I am, who will set me free from this body of death? Mm -hmm. So earlier we talked a little bit about having like those two things warring inside of us. Mm -hmm. And we talked about the right hand and the left hand, right, going against each other. So what if you... Um, what would you do or what would you say to somebody 
who really wants to overcome something, but they're in this, oh, wretched man that I am state. What would you do? What would you say? How would you encourage them to be faithful in that? And what hope would you give them that they could overcome? Um, honestly, I, I think it comes back to accountability. Um, like they were saying, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, people are going to do what, what they're going to do. However, it's, um, it's helpful to be, help, hold them accountable for what they say they're going to do and to help them push forward. Um, I don't think there's something specific that, I, I mean, I guess you can do it. <laughs> I don't know. But um, at the, yeah, like I said, it's really just keeping them accountable. Uh -huh. I was going to ask you to repeat the question. Please. I said, how would you encourage someone who feels like they're in that, oh, wretched man that I am, who's uh -huh. going to, you know, if you Beat get to that hopeless up. place, yeah. he said, don't beat yourself up. Uh -huh. If you ever get to that place, you have tried and you have tried and you have prayed and you have cried and you just uh -huh. feel like you're in this space like, I'm never, I'm never going to get over this or I'm never going to get through this. I, I don't see how I'm ever going to, to uh -huh. actually overcome. Um, if someone told me that, the first thing I'll tell them is this. Um, don't worry. Jesus died for people just like you. Oh. He died for all of us who sinned, who go through a law, and we beat ourselves up saying, I'm not good enough. I'm not this. Of course we're not good enough. We can't do this on our own. It is not easy. So what you, the good thing about God is that he'll always have his arms wide open for you to go and repent and turn from your sins and come to him. Amen. 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 Okay. I was also going to say, um, I like to be honest with people. So I think when you're going through something like that, you can't dwell in that state mm -hmm. of, oh, I'm a wretched man. I'm, I can't get through this. I think once you keep putting yourself through those thoughts over and over, then you really start to convince yourself that there's nothing that can help you at all. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely tell them, you know, let's kind of snap out of it and try to, you know, <laughs> maybe just do little things that might give you a little bit of hope every day. You know, okay. obviously you can't tell somebody immediately to just snap out of it. But, you know, give yourself some time to think about what's happening and process it. And then think, okay, how are we going to get past this instead mm -hmm. of dwelling in it? And use those same kind words, right? Snap yes, yes, kind words. I like kind it. Words. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it <laughs> on my husband. <laughs> I definitely agree with Adriel. It's important to give them hope. I, can, I was trying to find a verse, but it would say something like, you know, the power like god started working in you so like don't lose faith like he will continue working in you oh the so. good work that he started oh, yes. he that yeah, starts he a good work yeah, he's good faithful one. to finish yes oh that is a great one the other thing too and this is just you know what we all can do if you if you want to start working out you ever try to go work out and you're like yeah i'm gung-ho to go and then it's time for you to go and you're just like you know actually need to do something Maybe else tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> in order to start something you actually have to start in order to break a habit you have to replace it with something else because if you are doing the habit right you've kind of created this thing in your mind this is the time I usually do this particular habit I need to replace it with something else so if my habit is oh my alarm goes off I usually turn over Oh, my alarm goes off I need to get up and pray and I need to go for a run I got to give myself something new to do so I don't sleep in or so I can start. So those are things, too. Um, I was going to say the verse that Shub was talking about is found in Philippians 1, verse 6. And it says, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Amen. And the text that my husband mentioned earlier is found in Proverbs 24, 16. Though the righteous fall seven times, they rise again, but the wicked stumble when calamity strikes. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, man, this has been a great discussion. Yeah, and I'm full, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you gave me a lot of spiritual meat to chew on today. All the great shares here. Um, you know what? I'll also add on top of all the great answers we have here, community is important. Yes. And we really got a sense of how important community is um, when this whole COVID thing hit, mm -hmm. right? In 2020, when we had to close our doors, uh, community became the first thing you missed. Yep. The getting up in the every Sabbath 
meeting the brothers and the sisters, um, shaking their hands, hugging, and those testimonies. I think it's the testimonies that really help you get through in situations like that where you just feel, man, I messed up. I don't know how I'm going to get through this. But remembering how Christ has done for you and others, that could really also help you get through. Amen. All right. So I want to wrap up our conversation with this closing thought. And then we have one more announcement. Paul said, I die daily. And so that dying daily, just for those who are watching online, is not actual physical dying. We want you all to be very much alive. But dying to the flesh like we've been talking about. He talks about killing the flesh every single day. So it's not a one and done type thing. It's a every day, every moment kind of thing. He had a new conversion every day. He took an advanced step toward heaven on a daily basis. To gain daily victories in the divine life is the only course that God approves. The Lord is gracious of tender pity and plenteous in mercy. He knows our needs and weaknesses, and he will help our infirmities if we only trust in him and believe that he will bless us and do great things for us. So I want to just leave us with that encouragement that God is merciful toward us. We're much harder on ourselves than than God ever will be. He's there to help us, and he's emptied out all of heaven for us. All we have to do is every day get up and decide, Lord, I give you the reins. I give you, I surrender and submit to your will. Help me to kill my flesh today because it's coming for me. <laughs> it's coming. Oh, wow. Um, well, I've been blessed by all that was said here. Mm -hmm. um, I was a great way in. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you guys for joining us. Yeah. We're going to have closing prayer, and then um, well, before we, before do, we that, do that, let's uh, go ahead and encourage our folks that are online that are watching right now to give. Uh, we have two ways to do it. You can cash app us, or you can also give via AdventistGiving.org. I believe that's the website. Mm -hmm. uh, we always accept donations. So You can also go to our website, Tabernacle yeah. at SDA Church online, and you can give there as well. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Let's do it. You want to pray for us? Let's do it. Okay. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. It has been an awesome time with you. And we are so glad your Holy Spirit is here to help us. Father, I just want to ask that you would be with everyone who is watching right now and our panel guests here who have had this conversation with us. Help us all to learn to kill the flesh on a daily Amen. basis. Amen. Help us to trust in you, to lead us in the right direction, and to you, you use you as our GPS in following and obeying your will in our lives and for our lives. I ask that you would be with everyone online right now. I ask that you would bless them and keep them. And in their own individual struggles, Father, help them to reach out to you. In your son Jesus' name, amen. 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 Have a wonderful Sabbath. Yes.
and 90% of the body's iron is contained within the blood cell. Also, iron is, when it's located inside the blood, is called hemoglobin, and when it's located in the muscle, it's called myoglobin. But we're going to focus on hemoglobin because it is so essential because it is the element that's going to transfer your oxygen from your lungs to every other tissue in your body. Now, that's what iron is. Now, for anemia, it's the reduced amount of red blood cells. So we said that iron is needed for the production of red blood cells. So if you have low iron, you can then have less blood blood cells. So that means, that defines what iron deficiency anemia is. It's uh, an anemic state caused on by lack of iron. So now that we know what iron deficiency anemia is, Let's talk about what it looks like. So iron deficiency anemia, you'll have various symptoms. Now, when you think about it, how your iron is, your, or your lack of iron makes less red blood cells, so you can't transport the oxygen and nutrients to your different tissues and organs. You're gonna be more tired, you're gonna have shortness of breath. Your heart might start beating faster even when you're at rest because it's just trying to get oxygen, as much oxygen to the tissues as possible. In addition, you might have some coldness in your hands and feet uh, because you're going to have poor circulation. You might look kind of pale, maybe in your eye area or in your mouth um, because of poor circulation as well. Um, and you might start having cravings for things that aren't really nutritious, such as ice or even clay or maybe dirt. Now, let's keep the mind frame of lack of oxygen and nutrients in our mind. Because when we think of the connection between iron deficiency and hair loss, we can see how it relates. Because to us, our hair might be very important to us, but to your body, it is not. So if there is not enough red blood cells or oxygen to go around, it's going to divert all the oxygen to your organs, like your brain, your liver, your kidney, those different, those different organs. So the hair follicle is actually very metabolic, so it needs a lot of nutrients and a lot of oxygen in order, in order to grow your hair. So if you don't have enough supply, then your hair will start to become thin and even start to fall out as well. So when this is the case, we have to think of next steps. So we go to our doctors and our practitioners and we would ask for some lab work to be done. Um, normally there's something called a complete blood count that is done annually for um, any for your annual wellness visits and in that you can see your hemoglobin which as we mentioned before is the iron that is in your red blood cells and also you can see your hematocrit which is basically the ratio between how much red blood cells is actually in the vol in the volume of blood and then your MCV is really how big your red blood cells are so if it's they're small or if they're a good size, they should be within the, the range of 78 to 98, um, or they could be even too big. But in the case of uh, iron deficiency anemia, these numbers would all be low, your hemoglobin, your hematocrit, and your MCV as well. So based on your symptoms, the, your practitioner may ask to do additional tests, which would be your ferritin, serum ferritin, and your total binding capacity. Now these check to see how your iron storage is. So it sees um, both how much iron you have on board and also how much iron you could have on board. So if those, if your ferritin level is low, that means you don't have that much iron and then also your total iron binding capacity is high, that means there's space for iron but it's not there, then most likely you have iron deficiency anemia. So what are going to be your next steps? Next steps are going to be reducing any excessive blood loss. So for women, they have a monthly friend called the period that comes and makes them have blood loss. But sometimes that can be excessive due to um, fibroids that may be in your uterine wall. So you'd want to talk to your gynecologist and see if there's anything that you can do to reduce the amount of pain and also bleeding that happens during your menstrual cycle. Also, you can have a GI bleed, which would be maybe an ulcer in your stomach lining, 
um, or in your intestines. That may, you may notice you have tarry black stools. That's a sign that you're having a GI bleed and that blood loss can also lead to anemia. So you'd want to prevent that by eating regularly uh, so that your body works to digest your food rather than the lining of your stomach. Um, and also you could have um, persistent nosebleeds. So something you'd want to do to prevent that, or if you're having a nosebleed, would be to pinch your nose and to lean forward, not backwards. So when you lean forward, you can allow the blood to accumulate and for a clot to form to stop the bleeding. If you lean backwards, the blood could trickle down your throat and go into your stomach and that's just going to continue the blood loss. So you want to lean forward and also a good trick would be to, while you're waiting and applying pressure for 10 minutes, would be to put ice, you can eat ice in your mouth so that that can help drop your blood, your, your, um, your body temperature and also cool that upper palate and help with vasoconstriction in your nose. And that's been proven to be better than actually putting an ice pack on your nose. So different things like that you can do to actually conserve the blood that you have and prevent um, blood loss. In addition, we can also intake more iron. So there's a, a lot of different foods that are iron rich. You can see them on the screen. And there are actually two types of iron. There's heme iron, which is found in meats, which is actually more readily available to your body. So it can convert that into hemoglobin quicker. Um, and then the non-heme uh, non, the non -heme iron is found in your plant-based um, foods and also your enriched foods like maybe your rice or your pastas as well. So when it comes to your intake, you would want to intake more, um, about a little bit more if you're on a strict veg vegan diet or vegetarian diet, more of the daily allowances the four iron so that your body can convert that into the necessary hemoglobin that you need. And as you can see, it does vary as you grow. Mostly for children, it's when you have growth spurts. And for women, it really varies when you're pregnant because you have a little child growing inside of you that needs a lot of iron. And a lot of times, that's when women notice that their hair is growing more fuller and thicker um, because they're taking prenatals, which are higher in iron. So they're like, oh, my hair's growing a lot longer. And I think that's God's way of <laughs> allowing you to have more hair so that you could, your baby might rip some of them out. So you at least end up even in the end. And then for men, normally our iron needs aren't that high because we don't lose that much blood um, regularly. But if you do donate blood a lot, then you may need to um, make sure that you're having a good iron intake. Um, also, you can see on the picture there was um, Black strap molasses, this is something that a lot of people do to, to help increase their iron levels. And it is beneficial as it has in a tablespoon, it contains about 20% of what you need for the day. So it's a good source of iron in that regard. And it could also help with osteoporosis if um, women are taking it because it has some calcium. Um, and if you do have to need supplementation, Make sure you speak to your healthcare provider about that because iron can lead, if you intake too much iron, it can lead to toxicity. And your signs of toxicity are going to be severe vomiting, you're going to have diarrhea, you can have stomach cramps, you can also have uh, that palish color to your skin, um, and in addition, you can also have weakness. So if you're having any of those signs, you definitely want to. Treat it as a medical emergency. It tends to happen more so in children having too much iron intake, maybe taking their parents' supplements or something like that. So definitely keep an eye on your kids. But if you do see these signs, make sure you treat it as a medical emergency, call poison control, and also seek, um, seek medical help as soon as possible. And now we also want to make sure that when we are trying to increase our iron levels, we also increase the absorption. And to do this, the best way is to increase your intake of vitamin C rich foods. So these are gonna be obviously your orange, like orange juice. You have your red pe bell peppers, kiwi, um, even broccoli. Those different things can help your body absorb the iron better. So when you're having a meal, you definitely wanna try to include those things as well. 
And things to avoid would be if you're going to ingest a meal that's rich in iron, you would want to not have it with any coffee or tea because that can affect it. And you would also want to limit any calcium or uh, antacid or proton pumps inhibitors. Sometimes people take like Tums or different things. So if you are taking iron supplements, you wouldn't want to take those with your Tums or any of your things to, help to, to promote your gastrointestinal health. So, and some antibiotics as well. So when I was doing and preparing for this um, health nugget, I actually uh, had like a little parallel that came to my mind with the story of Samson and Delilah, um, where she cut his hair and then he lost his strength. Now, there is definitely God was the one who provided him his strength, but I thought it was an interesting parallel because sometimes we can be our own Delilahs where we're not giving our bodies what we need, which can cause us to lose hair, which is a sign of us losing our strength. So um, make sure that you don't <laughs> become your own Delilah by ensuring that you take enough iron in your diet and if need be, speak to your healthcare provider to see if you can also take any supplements to make sure that your iron levels is adequate, not only for your hair, but also for your overall health. Now, the health ministry team will also be having um, today's AY, and the topic will be also hair care. So definitely make sure to tune in for that. And if you care anything about your hair, please be there to hear what we have to share. Um, well, until next time, I just want to thank you for joining us for another Health Nugget, and I want you all to be healthy and stay well. Thank you.
Hello, and welcome to Tabernacle Seventh-day Adventist Church in Miami, Florida. Our worship service will begin in a moment, but before it does, we want to thank you for joining us today, and we pray that you are blessed. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to our channel by clicking the button below and the notification bell to receive notices of future programs. If you're watching on Facebook, please like our page, share, and follow us. Thank you and enjoy the service. Timothy 4.12 says, Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech, in love, in faith, in conduct, and in purity. Thanks for worshiping with us today. Let us open with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for allowing us to see another Sabbath and to be here to worship with us at our Tabernacle Church. In your name, amen. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Youth Day here at Tabernacle. Whether you are a church member or this is your first time tuning in, welcome to the Tabernacle SDA Church Worship Service. The fact that you are here worshiping with us right now is not by chance, and we believe you're in for an experience with the Lord. And remember, if you miss a week, you miss a lot. Please take a moment to listen to these important announcements. The Gospel of Matthew Reveals Seminar resumes at 3.30 p.m. this afternoon. We enjoy studying God's Word together, and we encourage you to invite others to join in. AYM returns this afternoon at 5 p.m., and it is entitled, Hair Today, Gone Tomorrow. You don't want to miss it. Next weekend, we're asking for your help. Next Saturday evening from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m., and Sunday, June 6, from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. is a time for rubble removal. Breakfast and lunch will be served on June 6. Let's clean up in anticipation for the day where we can return to worship together here at the church. Social distancing rules will apply. The Southeastern Conference is taking up a special offering for the people of St. Vincent who still need our help. Visit www.secsda.org forward slash St. Vincent to make your donation today. Every dollar makes a difference. In COVID-19 news, all residents 12 years of age and older are now eligible to receive the Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson & Johnson vaccines. Northside SDA Church is also serving as a vaccination site. Please call 305 540-5402 to pre-register. As Tabernacle prepares to return to limited in-person services on July 3rd, we would like your input. Please go to tabsda.org forward slash connect and help us to help you. Or text the word REOPEN to 855-997-1170. Let us strengthen and transform our walk with the Lord by joining one of our virtual grow groups. Please visit our website to register and see the complete meeting schedule. Life is so much better when we grow through it together. To connect with us and stay up to date with events happening at Tabernacle, please visit our website, www.tabsda.org, 
follow us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. In addition, please pay attention to the announcement slideshow that is shown before and after service. And now, we're excited to have this special time set aside for our even younger members. Children, gather around. It's time for Tab Town Kids. We hope you enjoy today's story. Prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for my friends and family. Lord, please help us to know and understand you died on the cross for our sins. Please help us to trust that you will always love us even when we fall or make mistakes. Amen. Bye. Daddy. We are tired. Hello boys and girls, we the children welcome you to another exciting episode of Tab Town Storytime. We are thrilled to have you join us today. There is an amazing program planned just for you. Before we begin, our Tab Town family who will introduce us to today's lesson. I Santa Claus, my tooth will be healthy. So, whether you eat or you drink, or whatever you do, you do it all for the glory of God. First Corinthians 10, verse 31. Didn't our kids do a wonderful job introducing today's lesson? Now it's time to praise God. Let's get up and worship Him together. For today's lesson. Gather around and let us all listen attentively to hear from Jesus. Imagine you are very hungry 
and you are invited to a banquet. You sit down at the table and you find wine and unclean foods that you know you shouldn't have. What will you do? Daniel and his three friends faced that problem. Let's see what they did. King Nebuchadnezzar's army had invaded and conquered Judah. All the young men from the royal family and other important families had been taken to Babylon. Daniel, Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael were among the young Hebrews. Nebuchadnezzar's empire was enormous. The king knew that the Hebrew captives had many abilities. So he decided to train some of them for work in his government. They could help rule some parts of his vast empire. But first, they had to learn Babylonian ways. They needed to learn the language. They had to learn the way things were done in Babylon. Daniel and his three friends knew that they were going to serve the king. But they decided that God would be first in their lives. They would serve him first no matter what happened. There were so many new and interesting things to see in Babylon. Great temples for worshiping idols were everywhere. The young Hebrews saw parks shaded by strange trees and hanging flowering plants. The cities of Babylon were truly beautiful. After their long journey, everyone looked forward to their first meal in Babylon. They were to eat the best food. It was the same food served at the king's table. Rich roasted meats and sweet wine were on every table. The sweetest desserts in the whole land were there for all. All of the Hebrews were delighted with the food, all except Daniel and his three friends. They could not eat it. They knew that this food was not good for them. They also knew that some of the food and wine had been offered to idols. Daniel and his three friends determined to serve God no matter what happened. So Daniel asked the officer in charge of all the Hebrews to help. He asked for simple food and water to drink. Although the king's officer respected Daniel, he refused. He was afraid for his life. King Nebuchadnezzar himself had ordered the meal. If Daniel and his friends didn't eat that food, they might not be as strong as the others. And if that happened, the king might have the officer killed. But Daniel did not give up. The officer had appointed Melzar, a steward, to watch over Daniel and his friends. Daniel appealed to Melzar. Test us, he said. Let us eat simple food and drink only water for 10 days. If we are not as healthy as the others, do with us as you will. The steward agreed. At the end of 10 days, the four Hebrews were stronger and more alert than the other captives. With God's help, they had passed the test. During all three years of their training, they were served simple food and water. God was pleased with Daniel and his friends. The Bible says God helped them with their studies. He gave them wisdom and understanding, and he gave Daniel the ability to understand dreams. Daniel served God first. He obeyed God's rules about eating and drinking, and God rewarded Daniel. Daniel's service to Nebuchadnezzar would lead that great ruler to know the true God. When we put God first, he can use us to show others the great things he can do. How many of you, when confronted about something you did wrong, said, I did not mean to, or it was not my fault, or it was an accident, when you know it really was not? We live in a society that does not like to take responsibility. People who do bad things like to blame it on others, like their parents, friends, or unfortunate circumstances. 
there are no accidents when it comes to our choices. You make the choice to do either right or wrong. Remember sin is an intentional act that we either choose to do or not do. There are no accidents or excuses. No one can force you to sin. What happens with sin is that we give in to the temptation and act, or we listen to the Holy Spirit and resist the temptation. Jesus went to the Jordan River. He found John and wanted John to baptize him. Jesus had never sinned, but he needed to show by example what God wants us to do. After Jesus was baptized, he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Jesus fasted for 40 days and nights. That means he didn't eat anything. Think about that. He was hungry. Satan came to tempt Jesus, telling him, turn the stones to bread. Jesus told him that bread isn't the only thing that you need to live on. You need the words of God also. Satan said, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down and let the angels save you. Jesus said, do not tempt the Lord. Satan took Jesus up to a really high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. Satan told Jesus that I will give you all these things if you fall down and worship me. Well, Jesus answered by telling Satan to go away. You should only worship the Lord your God and only serve him. Boys and girls, remember Psalm 51:10. Create in me a pure heart, O God. Do not just resist. Flee from sin and never do it again. It's your choice and only you can decide what to do. Balance is the ability to hold ourselves upright and steady against gravity without falling down. It is an important skill from the day we are born all the way through adulthood. Kids like you and I use balance every day as we move across different surfaces, change from sit to standing position, and move around obstacles throughout the day. Balance is important for so many things we do. Some activities are obvious like walking on a balance beam. But did you know that we need balance for things like keeping an upright posture in our classroom, chair, running and even standing still? Our bodies, joints and muscles tell the brain about how the body is moving. Here's a fun fact. Balance is related to our core strength. Strong core muscle usually mean you have a six pack. For us to balance, our body sensory systems must work together. These are our eye system, ear system, and joint and muscle system. Balance is very important. We need balance in our Christian life too. Without balance, our core muscle, which is our heart, would not be able to function. Sin and selfishness would creep in. That is why we need balance in reading God's word, praying and spending time with Jesus every day. I need Jesus to help me balance my life. How about you? Thank you for worshiping with us today. We hope that the lesson helps all of us love Jesus and others more. Boys and girls, we would want to hear more from you. Let us know how you are using the lesson and activities throughout the week. If you are new to Tap Down Kids, we want to hear from you too and add you to our mailing list. So ask your parents to send your contact information to tabtownkids at tabsda.org. Don't forget to visit our Tabtown Kids page for more fun activities. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Lastly, complete today's sermon notes for a chance to win a special prize. We hope to see you next week for more fun at Tabtown Kids. Bye-bye! character was the worst lawbreaker. Who? Moses, because he broke all ten commandments at once. <laughs>
Kids, remember to visit tabsda.org forward slash tabtown and complete the sermon notes for a chance to win a prize. Unfortunately, we did not have a sermon notes winner this week. Children, please participate for your chance to win a prize. Good morning and happy, Sabby, happy Sabbath, church family. Uh, today, it is our privilege to present an award to a very special individual, Moise Maxi, uh, affectionately known as Mo. He moved to Miami from New Jersey as a single young man about five years ago, seeking a ministry where he could be, where he could contribute to the work of God. God led him to Tabernacle SDA Church. Moise has served or Mo has served as a church pianist, assistant music director, and music director here at Tabernacle. During his tenure as a musician and leader at Tabernacle, he helped to fund the new sound system. He contributed his skills and talents for all the musical groups at Tabernacle and helped bring a spirit of excellence to the music department. He could not have done any of this without the gracious support of his loving wife, Cara, who, was all, who also served as a dynamic praise and worship leader. To Cara and Mo, we are so grateful for your commitment and your service, and you will greatly be missed. Um, or we'll miss you greatly. Um, on a personal note, I do remember us, Mo, me and you just having a conversation when you first came here, and you were, you were, you were pretty young, at least in my eyes, and you were basically saying, man, I'm, I'm looking for a church not just to use my skills, but to build the kingdom of God. And, I, and all I can remember thinking, man, this guy is so young, and yet he understands the importance of building and, and, and using his gifts for, the, for building the kingdom of God. So I, I just thought that was so commendable. Um, and I also remember our first encounter as well. Our first encounter was kind of sketchy. You know, there was a little sketchy. We became friends, and um, God blessed you with a family. Now you have Lana here. This, I believe this is her first time here at Tabernacle as well. And your family became a part of my family, and now you're a part of the Tabernacle family. So I just want to wish you all well. Um, we love you very much. And though we're few in number here, I just want to remind all of our uh, Tab family that next week at 5 p.m., we invite, we're inviting the church family as well as our friends to come out and wish you guys well as you guys head to New Jersey. So at this time, I'm going to pass it over to Pastor and our first elder, and they'll present the uh, Moise Maxi and his lovely family with an award and a gift. Mo and Kara uh, and your family, we thank you for the dedication to this church. I know when you came here, um, you came here as a single man. Um, now you're leaving with a family. God has blessed you. God has certainly blessed you. I know that you're going back to New Jersey, and um, we wish you well. We wish you would stay, um, but we understand that this is a time of transition, and uh, we appreciate, we love the fact that you have ministered here. You have grown here. You have blessed this congregation and this world in a wonderful way, unimaginable, especially throughout this pandemic. Um, God has blessed you with the little one to go back now to, to family in New Jersey. And as a church family, we support you. We love you. Uh, if ever you feel that it's too cold in New Jersey, you know where you have a family. You can always hop on a plane or even take a ride down and, uh, and get right back here and bring some others with you. Um, to let them know that Miami is a place to be. But we love you. We love your family. We thank you for the service that you have rendered here. We do have some gifts, and then we're going to have a word, special word of prayer. But uh, Elder English has some words that he would like to share. Sure. Mo and Kara, I was not here when you all moved here. I was living away. Uh, but I would watch long distance from time to time and see the impact you, that you had on the music ministry. So I'm very grateful for the time that you send here. It seems like Miami, we're used to getting people from up north that bring their talents to South Beach, and then they find themselves going back home. So we can't fault you for going back home, but uh, we do want you to take this little gift. It is um, just a token of our appreciation that can help you in your transition back uh, to New Jersey, and know that we'll always miss you, always love you. If you ever want to come back, the doors will always be open. And I also have a small box, um, but, Good things come in small packages. 
So here you go, Mo, on behalf of the Tabernacle Seventh-day Adventist Church, we love you. We will miss you greatly. Uh, you have certainly edified the ministry here at TAB. And I pray that very soon we'll be not just singing here, but we'll be singing in the kingdom. But on that note, we want to take some time and have a special word of prayer for you and your family as you transition back, uh, that as you go back to your um, immediate family, um, that they will be supportive of your transition process and everything will go smoothly. So let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we're just so thankful today for this family. Lord, you have blessed Mo, you have blessed Kara and their entire uh, little one and their entire family, oh God. I pray in a special way today that you continue to keep them close to each other and close to you. That you will make way, make a way for them that as they travel back to the north, to New Jersey, that you would allow for everything to fall in place and for them to know that they will have a great testimony of how you have taken them from Miami uh, back home where they can be established and grow. So we thank you. We love you for what you have done in and through this family. Continue to allow for them to be a blessing to wherever their feet would go. And in the end, oh God, may we all cause you, call you blessed. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God Pastor, bless you. If, you. if you don't mind, if we, we could just read the plaque. There's the plaque as well, please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It says, with our deepest appreciation, Mo Maxi, Director of Music, with sincere gratitude for your outstanding direction, leadership, and service, for always encouraging us to stay faithful and pursue excellence and, and service to Christ. Pastor Dotton and the Tabernacle Church family, um, May 29th, 2000. 21. Thank you all. Amen. At this time, we want to thank God for what he's done for us and what he will do for us in the future. Has God been good to you? Has he provided for you? Even something as simple as the internet that gives you access to tune in right now? If so, I encourage you to give back to God in your tithes. And don't forget to give just as big in your offerings. These offerings stay right here in our church and support our ministries, such as our community service program, children's ministry, youth ministry, and so much more. Let's all bow our heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for allowing us to be able to have this time set aside where we can give faithfully to you not just for your work, but for the work of Tabernacle. No matter where it may come from, we thank you for providing for us and giving Tabernacle away. We thank you, we love you, in your name, amen.
It is now time to talk to our Heavenly Father and intercede through prayer. If you have a praise request or even a praise report, please send the information through our YouTube and Facebook chats or by texting the word PRAYER to 855-997-1170. We also want to pray for our members who are battling illness. We want to remember the Benjamin and James families who are grieving the loss of loved ones. Let us continue to pray for Sister Moranzi, Sister Crutchley, Brother and Sister Thomas, Sister and Brother Johnson, Sister Ryan, Sister Baker, and many others that are in need of God's healing touch. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for allowing us to see another Sabbath, another week that has successfully passed. Thank you for giving us another day, another chance at life for all of our wrongdoings. We want to thank you for our older members. As we see in the announcements that it's Older Americans Month, it is starting to end soon, but we hope that they will not be forgotten. We want to pray for the Tabernacle family who is joining us, even our virtual family who is not able to attend our church physically, even when we reopen in July. We want to pray for the prayer requests that are in the live chats. I can't see them, but you know the requests, even the unspoken ones. We want to pray for our pastor, Pastor Dotton, that his sermon will inspire many people and he will continue his work that he's been doing for the past five months. We want to thank you for the Maxi family for their service to Tabernacle and the work that they will do in New Jersey. We want to pray for allowing this youth weekend to happen. Those who aren't often seen on center stage, they can present their talents today in a meaningful way. We also want to pray once again for our pastor for thanking me, even me, to allow, use his podium to share the good news virtually as what we call an e-missionary. We thank you again. We love you. In your holy precious name, amen and amen.
Happy Sabbath Tab family and visiting friends and those online. We welcome each and every one of you here on this Sabbath day. Uh, it is Youth Day and uh, it's a wonderful uh, experience just to be able to be here. Our young people were leading out last night and we thank you all for a job well done. And for those who are leading today, we thank you uh, because you have also done a wonderful job here. And so we thank all of our young people and everyone for, especially the adults, for taking just a step back and allowing for our young people to take hold of the service and being able to just showcase uh, just some of the talents and giftedness that they have, have from God. And so we thank God for that. That this morning. Now, this morning, the, the theme is identity, identity, and uh, who God says we are. And we're staying with that theme on identity here today. And I'm going to invite you to please turn in your Bibles, turn in your Bibles today uh, to Genesis, Genesis 27. And I'm going to read from verses 18 onward. And I'm, because it's young people, I'm not going to stay very long, but I've got a few words just to share with you today uh, from my heart that God has placed there. Verses 18 says, so he went to his father and said, my father. And he said, here I am. Who are you, my son? Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done just as you have told me. Please arise, sit and eat of my game, that your soul may be, may be blessed, may bless me, sorry. But Isaac said to his son, how is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? And he said, because the Lord your God brought it to me. Isaac said to Jacob, please come near that I may feel you, my son, whether you are really my son Esau or not. So Jacob went near to Esau, his father, and he felt him and said, the voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he did not recognize him because his hands were hairy like his brother Esau's hands. So he blessed him. Then he said, are you really my son Esau? He said, I am. Identity theft. For the next little while, we'll speak on that topic, identity theft. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, Lord, speak today. We have come into your house, and we need a word from you. So today, O oh God, don't disappoint us, but allow for us to leave here today knowing that we have heard directly from your throne. So speak through this piece of clay that you have created once again. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. I don't know about you, but um, many of us have possibly been the recipients of theft. In fact, if not just a regular theft, identity theft is probably one of the most sinister crimes out there at this moment. In fact, in fact, in fact, here in Miami, uh, fraud is known as one of the big crimes to be committed. Am I right or wrong? In fact, individuals don't even think twice about stealing your identity. And before long, there'll be two and three people all claiming to have the same name, the same middle name, and same last name as yourself. Fraud is on the top scale because individuals are always seeking to find a way into your home to get certain information. In fact, I can share with you that there were some individuals, even in my family, that we really didn't want close to us. Can I say that again? There are some individuals, even family members, that you really don't want to get close to you or to even scan your credit cards or something in your home or some personal identification before, because before long, you will have many individuals claiming to be you. There are individuals that are sometimes close and sometimes always lurking about. Even in your trash, they'll be digging. Even if you try to shred information, and in fact, that's what they said, in order to safeguard your information, many of us today have to resort to actually hiding it, to actually safeguarding it by shredding every little piece of paper with our name on it. That's a type of, of situation we're living in right now. But can you imagine, can you imagine, stay with me, in this Bible narrative, we have something very similar. One of the first instances of identity theft in the Bible. 
No wonder why this situation still continues even to this day, because individuals are still lurking about seeking if they can grab hold of your information. In fact, in fact, I must even say, even attend churches and come under the guise of spiritual leaders and spiritual individuals who are deeply connected to God only to grab hold of your information. Can I say it again? They will even pose as individuals in the church who are uh, 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 Bible-abiding and Bible-toting individuals who come under the pretense of prayer only to try and steal your information. I know what I'm talking about. Let me go in for a moment. Because there are, there are many individuals in churches who have created a group. Can I go there? I'm going to go there this morning. Because here we find there were individuals in the church. One church, I don't want to name the church, but they invited my wife to actually join a group. And before long, when, when they claimed that they were just going to be praying, what we didn't realize is that they were not praying, you know, praying to God. No, they were praying on individuals. And there are people even in the church who will pray on other individuals. In fact, we find it in the Bible narrative. Here is Rebecca, who is a God-fearing woman in the household of someone who is devoted and dedicated to God. And yet now she has a plan. In fact, she overhears her husband talking to his son, saying, hey, I want to bless you. That's a biblical thing there, where he is a blessing that he's pronouncing on his son. That means that he's the firstborn. His name is Esau. He was red when he was born. He, he came out and he was hairless. Uh, or actually, he was very hairy. And then the other one, Jacob, who came forward, and, and when he came out of the womb, he was grabbing the heel of his brother. And that means that he was always going to be at odds, always trying to get the headship of the household. And here in this situation, we find that Jacob does just that with his mother. They plot and they scheme and they devise this plan. This deceptive plan to now take the role that has been cast, uh, supposed to be placed from his daddy onto him as a blessing as being the firstborn. We find in the narrative that poor, poor uh, uh, Jacob doesn't even realize that now that he's getting older and he wants to bless his son, he, he wants to bless his son. Or in, in fact, Isaac wants to bless his son. And as he's, he's now beginning to, to pray over his son and tells his son what he needs to do, he sends his son out to go and get this beautiful meal prepared for him. He has to go and hunt to bring it back. And in the process of, of coming back, uh, 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 Rebecca overhears what, what the conversation was and devised this plan with, with Jacob. She says to him, hey, I want for you to dress like your, your brother. Uh, since he's hairy, I want for you to put on the goat, the goat uh, hairs on you. I want for you to go into your father and act like you are your brother Esau. And, and poor uh, uh, Isaac doesn't even realize what is happening. As Isaac uh, uh, meets uh, his son, Jacob, and Jacob, his name means surplanter. He is a crook, in other words. He sits down with his daddy, and they're having this conversation. And here is the first thing for all of the young people. Let me just share this. If something doesn't feel right, maybe it's not right not maybe no it's not right if it doesn't feel right it's not right and that was the first course of action in order for you to tell that something is is a fraud a fake then if it doesn't feel right then most likely it's not right and here is the first instance in the bible where 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 we're learning from isaac that something is not right a isaac when he meets with jacob he he touches him and he says are you really my son esau and, and in the back of his mind he's knowing that something is wrong it just doesn't feel right and and the first case of identifying a fraud is because they will use certain type of language and and how they actually present themselves you can say something is just not right about this situation it just doesn't feel right it just doesn't seem right it just seems kind of shady it just seems kind of uh crooked in some way then most likely it is if it doesn't feel right then don't do it if God is impressing upon your heart not to go in that direction, but you're like, well, it's, it still seems maybe I can. If you're finding excuses, it shouldn't be. In other words, let me get there with the young people a little bit. If you're in that relationship and after two weeks, 
After two weeks, he's all about, I love you, I this, I that. Then maybe it's not the way that you should be going. Not maybe, no, it's not the way you should be going. Because God has somebody else prepared for you. But the moment that you're still connected to that fool, oh, did I say that? Excuse me. The moment you're connected to that guy and that, that girl because she looks good, because she may even smell good. Now, now, understand, the looks and the smell was what got got him right here when he touched when he touched this this guy Jacob when he touched his son Jacob it fooled him when when he couldn't see but when he touched him when he smelled him then he said oh it's got to be him but the voice doesn't sound right my friends that's what you got to listen to first is the voice the voice of God will always be very clear be very clear the voice will be very clear and that's a lesson for us to identify a fake and a fraud you've got to be able to listen clearly to the voice of god if you don't if there's something muddled in the voice if it's not truly clear then maybe not maybe you you've got to drop it but here again here again here again i, I remembered i remembered this and i want to i want to be able to stay there on this lesson because not only do you listen to the voice of God to be able to identify when something is wrong. How do you know the voice of God? Man, you've got to be in prayer. You've got to spend some deep time in prayer and in study of God's word. God's word will reveal to you some tricks that people will do. God will reveal some things clearly if there is a mishap on the job and they're trying to blame it on you. And God will make things clear, but you've got to present it to him. If there is a relationship that you're about to get into, God will make things clear, but you've got to present it to him. And when you present it to him, don't say, God, this is the person you have for me. No, say, God, this may be the person you have for me, but sift them through. Let, them, let me know clearly that this is the direction you want me to go. And when you see the signs, be very clear cautious because there are always signs that God is going to put up to reveal clearly if that's the direction for you and when you see the signs don't try and negate them and push them aside and still go forward no God is putting up those parameters so that you can be safe can I say it again God puts up parameters and makes things clear for us so that we know what direction we need to walk into don't go into that job saying it's the one God provided and there are all these signs that God has put up to tell you, no, there's a detour. You need to stop and yet you're still going full strength ahead. The salary might be good. The pay might be excellent. But if God knows that it's not the place, he will always put a, a barrier in place to protect you. That's the type of God that we serve. And in fact, God was showing, it was showing Isaac in this case that this was not the person, but yet he was still going full strength ahead. And then he blessed him. The Bible says that Isaac blessed Jacob thinking that it was Esau. Blessed him because he thought that he was Esau. My friends, how do you know? How do you know the original? How do you know the original? Now, I can stay here and tell you about this little boy in China who wanted to be a jade master. One thing that he always wanted and always wanted to experience was how to be a jade master. And jade is like a jewel. It's a stone. And he went every day. His mom took him to this jade master. And every day, the jade master will put him in this little chair and say, son, sit in this chair and place in his hand a piece of jade. He would hold that piece of jade in his hand and he would move the piece of jade around and he would say, look, every day I'm going to this man and all he does is put me sitting down, sitting down in this chair and hands me a piece of jade. After a few months, after a few months of doing this, the little boy got upset. He went home and he said to his mother, I'm not going back to that man again because he want, I want to be a jade master and he's delaying the process. All he does is sit me down in this chair all day long, morning, noon, and even evening. I'm sitting there with a piece of jade in my hand and I don't even get to do anything with the jade. All he does is to make, while he's there making and shaping the, 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 the stuff into different shapes and, and being able to sell it, I'm just sitting there with a piece of jade. Well, excuse me, mom, I'm not going back, he said. And mom said, look, you need to go back. And on that day, he went back into that place, what he thought was going to be the last time. Anybody know when you get upset on that job, you say it's the last time? Well, he got upset and he said, that's it. I'm done with that man. He picked up the piece of jade as is customary and he placed it in the little boy's hand and said, go sit in that chair. And the little boy was sitting there, and as he's moving the, the piece of rock in his hand over and over again, he said he jumped up 
And he said to the, the, the jade master, he said, look, this is not jade. And the, the, the jade master looked at him and said, what do you mean? I gave you a piece of jade. He said, no, this is not jade. I know jade because I've spent time with jade every day and I've moved it around in my hands and I've spent all this time. This is not jade. It's just a piece of rock. And that's the key, my friends, because if you want to be able to identify the original, you've got to spend time with it. If you want to be able to know the original, if you want to be able to know what it's like and be very clear with what God is designed for your life, you've got to spend time with him. You can't expect to know the original if you don't spend time with it. In fact, in fact, in fact, all of the, the thieves, all of the thieves know that in, in order to, to spot a, a fraud, you've got to be able, the, the, the best thief knows that in order to get away with it, they've got to replace what the original was actually like and have a replica so close that you won't miss it. Can I say that again? All the thieves, the good thieves, know that in order to get away with the crime, they've got to replace what the original was. If they're stealing an art, they will replace the art with something that replicates the original so much that you won't be able to decipher it. My friends, that is where we have got to come in. Because once you're able to spot the original, to know the original, to be able to spend time with the original, you'll be able to recognize any flaws that comes in with the defects of something that is fraudulent that is placed there. In the same way, my friends, the Bible lets us know that we have an enemy, the devil, who is coming in like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. This enemy, in fact, has set up shop and wants to destroy with the image that God has set up in our lives. In fact, if, 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 the, enemy, if the enemy does this thing, he, he distorts what God has actually created. So when individuals look at themselves, they don't see a child of God. They see defects in this creation that God has created. Can I stay here for a moment? They see problems in what God has created. So when they look in the mirror, they say, well, you know what? I've got to fix this thing because this thing is not really created perfect here. I want to be able to go to a plastic surgeon and fix this side. Now I've got to address something that's happening in our community. Right now you have a whole lot of women and a whole lot of men that's spending a whole lot of money to be able to fix certain portions of their body. Hello, somebody. You're going out and you're spending thousands of dollars because your lips are just too big. Or that side is just a little bit too, too wide. Or, or this, this portion of your body is just not right. My friends, God has created a beautiful creation, a beautiful creature. He has created you, my friends, in his image. You are not flawed. And the mere fact that individuals continue to live a life hearing negative things and having negative uh, emotions and having negative thoughts about themselves, my friends, that is a void of what God has created. And the enemy has come in and tried to, to reshape our thinking as if we're not a child of the living king. But the king has not made a mistake. He has created you in his very image. You are the stamp of our creator. And he he calls you by very name, my friends. He knows who you are. He knows where you live. He knows everything about you. And he says, you have created in my image. You are made in my likeness. But now we're not even concerned. We're not even, 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 even happy with who God has created. We want to change every little component of our body. And we have this attitude. Many of us are shaped in this image of the devil instead of what God has created. We have, we have tried to change what God has created and have morphed into something that is not even like him. But God is calling us back to himself. God, in spite of what has happened in our lives, desi desires to have that intimate, personal relationship with each and every one of us. And it doesn't matter how far we have gone, he still cares for us. Do you realize in this same narrative that God doesn't throw away Jacob no matter how far he has gone? 
Have you realized that in spite of all the things that Jacob has done, even to his own brother, that God doesn't cast him away? That even though he stole from his brother and stole a birthright, that even then throughout, the, 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 throughout history, biblical history, we always hear Jacob's name listed, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that God didn't just write his name off because God blessed him, his father blessed him, and he still maintained the blessing in spite of all that has happened in Jacob's life and him being a supplanter, him being a thief, him being someone who stole from his brother. My friends, even those who were deceptive and, and, and tried to steal from his own brother, God saw fit to still write his name down in history. Isn't God good that no matter how far we have gone, no matter how marred we make the image of God, no matter how distant we are from the Savior, my friends, he still sees fit to come looking for us. No matter how far we go, he searches for us. No matter what we do, he's still there. No matter how many clubs we've been to, he's still there with us. No matter how many times we have lied he still forgives us no matter how many times we have cheated he's still there to forgive us my friends Jesus cares for us in spite of the things that we have done in our lives that are atrocious in the eyes of individuals he cares for us and in the very end my friends Jacob his name is even changed isn't that wonderful Jacob's name is changed he was born a supplanter he was born a cheater he was born a thief, yet when he met with the Savior, his name was changed completely. And we find at the very end that Jesus calls him by name, and his name is now written, my friends, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. My friends, it's a wonderful thing to be called a son and a daughter of God. And no matter what happens in our lives, know this that God still cares for each and every one of us. I'm reminded of this story. I'm reminded of this story of this young lady who got upset at her mother. In fact, her mother, uh, she felt was getting on her nerves. She wanted to do her own thing, and she decided to go out and find her own way. So she left from home, and she went out into the streets. Before long, she got herself in some real trouble, got herself in some, some bad company, and found herself actually being on the streets and being trafficked. This young lady could not get off the streets and was there going from place to place. In fact, her pimp had her out all hours of the night meeting all types of people. But her mother never forgot her child. She went down in the roughest part of the city and pinned up pictures of her daughter all over the city, saying that she needed to have her daughter back. In fact, it says no matter what you are, no matter where you are, and no matter what you have become, just know that I still love you. Isn't that just like God, my friends, that no matter what we have become, no matter where we are, no matter what we have become, my friends, he still loves us and cares for us. My friends, that's what, that's what happened. In this story here, you find a young lady is there. She's on the street corner. She just came off from another client and she's walking through the building. And there she looks up on the side and sees a picture of her. It's a picture of when she was much younger, but she recognizes it. And she sees the writing underneath in her own mother's handwriting. It says, no matter what you have become, no matter where you are, just know that I love you and I want you to come home. And she broke into tears and underneath there was a number and she pulled out her cell phone that she had and she dialed the number and on the phone was her mother saying, I long to meet with you. Isn't that good news, my friends, that no matter what we have been engaged in, no matter where we have gone, no matter what we have done, we serve a savior who is always there, ready and willing to take us back. So I don't know what you have done. I don't know what your past is like. And I don't know who tried to mess up your identity, but I came by to remind you that in spite of what you have gone through and in spite of the terror and the, the terrible moments in your life that God still cares for you. God loves you with an everlasting love. No matter what you have become, no matter what you are, no matter where you are, just know you serve a savior who loves you and wants you to come home. And I don't know who you are right now, but you know definitely 
that the Holy Spirit has been speaking to you and desires to have that relationship with you. I'm asking you right now, I'm pleading with you to make a decision for Jesus Christ. Every young person under the sound of my voice, your identity was been, has been marred by this enemy, but know that we serve a God who wants to restore your identity. That no matter what he has thrown your way, he loves you. Our God loves you. He cherishes you. He has created you. And you are the apple of his eye. I want to ask you to do something today. I want to ask you to go online to fill out that card, that card that lets us know that you desire to be in connection with Jesus Christ. Send us a message online. And be sure that we'll be in contact with you. We want to be able to pray with you, pray for you. Our young people, under the sound of my voice, I can't wait to be able to worship with you. I can't wait to be able to celebrate that moment in July when we reopen church and to be able to worship together. But until then, just understand that you don't have to be like anybody else. God has created you in his image. He's created you in his likeness, and he desires to have that personal relationship with you. Let us pray together. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you today for being our God. Lord, we have seen through the life of Isaac and the life of Jacob that you were able to change individuals who had wrong motives. Lord, we ask in a special way today that you will bring each and every person under the sound of my voice to a saving knowledge of your, your sacrifice on that cross. So today, O oh God, keep us close to you and allow for us to maintain the identity that you have placed in us from since we were born. We thank you and we love you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor, Dot Pastor Dotton, thank you for inspiring us today. I pray that each of us found something to encourage us throughout the week. If God's word has inspired you today and you want to invest into your spiritual walk, whether it's through intercessory prayer, Bible study, baptism, or joining one of our grow groups, please visit tabsda.org forward slash next step and someone from our personal ministries team will reach out to you. What a blessing it will be when we are able to worship together again on Sabbaths. Remember to join us online for the Gospel of Matthew Reveal Seminar at 3.30 p.m. and AYM at 5 o'clock this evening. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. We love you and may God bless you. Have a happy Sabbath. Thank you for worshiping with us here at Tabernacle. We pray that you are blessed by today's service. Don't forget, if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to our channel by clicking the button below and the notification bell. If you're watching on Facebook, please like our page, share, and follow us. See you again soon.
Thank you.